Hi, thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be doing something slightly different to my standard video on this channel. Uh, I'm going to be doing something to do with probability and random variables. Okay, so uh, if you don't know what a random variable is, let me just give, I guess, a brief informal definition. A random variable is something, some, simply something you can prescribe a probability or a probability density to. So, for example, if uh, I've flipped a coin 10 times, I could say let x be the number of heads I flip out of those 10 coins and x will take some num some integer value between 0 and 10 inclusive uh, with different probabilities. And the reason it's called a random variable is because if I do my 10 co coin flips today and then do another 10 tomorrow, x is not going to be the same in both cases. Uh, I could flip 5 heads today and 7 tomorrow. Okay, And each of them occur with different probabilities. Um, but yeah, that's essentially a vague definition of a uh, random variable. And then you also get continuous random variables in which you prescribe probability densities, but those are, I guess, a little bit more difficult to define, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> but so if you want to see more about random variables, just give it a quick Google, and I'm sure that the Wikipedia page will give you a lot of information. Anyway, today what I want to do is show you how you can generate a uniform distribution just from flipping a bunch of fair coins. And again, you don't know if you don't know what a uniform distribution is, don't worry too much. It's not really pivotal to this video. I'm just going to say a few lines about it at the end. Um, but yeah, so let's just get stuck into what the theorem is or slash what the thing I want to generate is. Uh, we have xn being independent and identically distributed but nearly half random variables for every natural number n. What on earth does that mean? Uh, so each of the xn's are random variables so I have an infinite number of random, var random variables x1, x2, x3 and so on. Uh, one for each natural number and they're each independent from one another and they all have this Bernoulli distribution which simply means the probability that xn equals 1 is equal to a half and the probability that xn equals 0 is equal to 1 minus a half which is also a half. Okay so it doesn't take any other values other than 0 and 1 and each of those occur with probability 1 half. Okay so that's kind of what this guy here means and we've got an infinite uh, number of those random variables and we're going to introduce a new random variable u which is simply going to be the weighted sum of these xn's. So it's the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of xn times 2 to the power of minus n. Okay, and what we want to do is compute the probability that u is less than or equal to theta for any theta a member of the reals. And I guess from the fact that I said uniform distribution and this guy here is called u, you might suspect that u has a uniform distribution. But of course, we've got to prove that. And that's what I'm going to be doing in today's video. Anyway, if you want to have a go at trying to prove this result here, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so firstly I want to consider two kind of trivial cases for theta, one when theta is negative, and one when theta is at least one. Okay, and I guess one thing I'm going to mention, I'm not going to uh, go into too much detail about, is I can actually swap this inequality to a strict inequality, or back to a weak inequality, whenever I want, because the probability that u actually equals a value theta for any particular theta is zero. Uh, and that kind of goes from the fact that this is sort of a, u is a continuous random variable. Okay, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go too much into too much detail there, but I'm gonna swap the less than or equal to less than throughout this video. Uh, so if you see me swap it and go, oh, because he made a mistake, uh, uh, well, probably I should be a bit more rigorous in it, but we're allowed to swap the less than or equal to, to less than whenever we want. Okay, so probability u being less than or equal to theta, let's firstly look at when theta is less than or equal to zero. Well then the probability that u is less than or equal to theta, that's just the probability that u is less than theta, from what I just said. Um, and now this guy here, if we look at what u is, because each of the xn's are either zero or one, in particular each of the xn's are non-negative, so that means that u is certainly non-negative because we're summing up a bunch of non-negative terms. So u is certainly at least zero, but because theta is less than or equal to zero, the probability that u is less than or equal to zero, well, that would mean that u is certainly negative, but we can't have u being negative and non-negative. So that means that the probability u is less than theta is just equal to zero. Okay, now we're gonna look at when theta is at least one. So if theta is at least one, then the probability that u is less than or equal to theta, well, if we just look at what uh, u is, uh, it's the sum of the weighted sums of the xn's, but each xn is at most one. So u is at most the sum from n equals one to infinity. Now, if I replace each of the xn's with one, I can just write two to the minus n, and this is just a geometric series. It equals one because it's just a half 
plus a quarter, plus an eighth, plus a sixteenth, and so on. So u is at most one. So the probability of u being less than or equal to theta, if theta is bigger than or equal to one, this guy here is just one. Okay, so we've done sort of a bunch of values of theta when theta is less than or equal to zero and when theta is bigger than or equal to one. The last thing I guess we need to do is look when theta is in between zero or one, and that's slightly more difficult, and we're going to need to use the law of conditional probability. Okay, so let me just clear up the whiteboard and we'll move on to that case. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just choose some theta in between 0 and 1, and we're going to write it out in binary. So theta equals the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of some constants yn times 2 to the my n, minus n. And each yn is either 0 or 1. And yeah, so theta is in between 0 and 1, and yn is either 0 or 1, and that depends on what theta is. But yeah, each of the yn's are constants and not random variables. Unlike the x ends, when we write out u, which remember is just the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of xn times 2 to the minus n. Okay, so the capital letters in here are random variables, and the lowercase letters, the y ends, the thetas, they're constants. Uh, but u and x ends are random variables. Okay, we want to work out the probability that u is less than or equal to theta, and as I said, we're going to do that by uh, the law of conditional probability. But first, I'm going to introduce another random variable, which I'm going to call i. Okay, and this is simply going to be the, the minimum of the natural numbers n, such that xn does not equal yn. Okay, so obviously each of the xn's will take some value either 0 or 1, and in fact each of the yn's are constants, but they're either 0 or 1. So we're finding the smallest such n, such that xn does not equal yn. In other words, one of them is 0 and one of them is 1. Okay, and this, I guess, another way of writing this is the minimum n, uh, or another way you can write this is the, the n such that x1 equals y1, x2 equals y2, dot dot dot, xn minus 1 equals yn minus 1, but then xn does not equal yn. That's kind of an alternate way of writing this thing here. Okay, so we want to work out the probability u is less than or equal to theta, but this guy here is simply the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the probability u is less than or equal to theta, given that i equals n times the probability i equals n. Okay, so this just comes from the law of conditional probability. If you haven't heard of that before, uh, I suggest you go and look it up. I don't want to dwell on it too much in this video, uh, but it's a really cool uh, trick you can use to evaluating probabilities. Okay, uh, so we've got two sort of probabilities here, which we're summing up. Uh, let's firstly look at the probability i equals n and work that out. The probability i equals n Okay, this here is just the probability. I, I said, as I said, another way you could write this is x1 equals y1, x2 equals y2, and so on, all the way up to xn minus 1 equals yn minus 1, but then xn does not equal yn. Okay, so that's just an alternate way of just sort of how we defined i. Okay, but we can now use the fact that each of the xi's are independent from one another to write this as a product. So this is just the product. So probability x1 equals uh, y1 times the probability x2 equals y2 and so on all the way up to the probability xn minus 1 equals yn minus 1 times the probability xn equal, uh, does not equal yn like so okay now what's the probability that x1 equals y1 well remember y1 is just some number between 0 and 1 and it's a constant we can't change it so let's suppose y1 is 0 well, what's the probability x1 equals 0? Well, if you just go back to the fact that x1 is Bernoulli, uh, is, has a Bernoulli distribution, probability that x1 equals 0 is half. Well, okay, in the other case, when y1 equals 1, well, also the probability x1 equals y1 is the probability x1 equals 1, which is a half. So either way, this guy's going to equal half, and for the same reason, this guy's going to equal half, and all the terms up to this guy here are going to equal a half. So the only thing we sort of need to work out is the probability xn does not equal yn, but that's also a half, and the reason for that is, well, if xn equals zero, the probability, uh, sorry, if yn equals zero, the probability xn does not equal yn is the probability xn does not equal zero, but that's the probability that xn equals one. And that again is a half, and you can use the same argument for if yn was one. Okay, so each of these guys here is a half, so this probability here is just a half to the power of n, which is just two to the minus n. Okay, so I can swap the probability i equals n in our summation here, 
to 2 to the minus n, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let me just rub this out, and rub this out and replace it with 2 to the minus n. Okay, so I guess now the thing we need to work out is this guy here. The probability is u is less than or equal to theta given that i equals n. Okay, and now this guy here I claim is just equal to y n. Okay, and to see that, well, if we know that i equals n, then that means that x1 equals y1, x2 equals y2, and so on, all the way up to xn, uh, xn minus 1, sorry, equals yn minus 1, but then xn does not equal yn, so we know that. And we know that xn takes values either 0 and 1, and, so does, and yn is either 0 or 1, so if xn does not equal yn, well then there's, either, there's only two cases, so xn equals 0 and yn equals 1. And I claim that this is sort of a good case, in which case u is less than or equal to theta. And to see this, um, so we suppose xn equals 0 and yn equals 1. Um, then, well, if we just write out what the probability u is less than theta is, uh, if we look at this guy and this guy, well, we know the first n minus 1 terms are the same. So we saw when we're comparing them, for, um, we only need to look for uh, the index being bigger than or equal to n. But if xn equals 0 and yn equals 1, then you know that the value of u, if I say you look at u minus theta, I want to show that this guy here is uh, is positive, so that means that u, if u ah, I want to show this guy here is negative, so that means that u is less than or equal to theta, or well, u minus theta is just the sum from i is bigger than or equal to n of xn minus yn uh, times uh, 2 to the minus n. Okay, but we know that xn equals 0 and yn equals 1. So this is just minus 2 to the minus n plus the sum from i is bigger than or equal to n plus 1. Sorry, these should always be these should all be i's. Like so. Okay, so this is minus equals minus 2 to the minus n plus the sum from i equals n plus 1 to infinity of xi minus yi times 2 to the minus i, but this guy here can be at most, uh, well, if xi is 1 and yi is 0, then this guy here has at most value 1. Uh, so this guy is at most minus 2 to the minus n plus the sum being, from i being bigger than or equal to n plus 1 of 2 to the minus i, uh, yeah, 2 to the minus i. Uh, but this guy here is, a, again, just a geometric series, and it has a sum 2 to the minus n, so that's going to cancel with the minus 2 to the minus n. So this is at most 0. Oopsie daisy. So that, of course, means that u is certainly less than or equal to theta. So in this case, we have that the probability is u is less than, the probability u is less than or equal to theta is equal to 1. And now I'll leave it as sort of an exercise for you to check. In the other case, when xn equals 1 and yn equals 0, the probability of u is less than or equal to theta is 0. And it's kind of exactly the same argument but with the x i's and y i's reversed. Okay, uh, so basically what we've shown, or what I've shown half of, and you'll show the other half of, is that u is less than or equal to theta if and only if uh, y n equals 1. So um, this probability here, probability u is less than or equal to theta, uh, is equal to y n. Because if y n equals 1, the u, probability of u is less than or equal to theta is equal to 1, which also is y n. But if yn equals 0, then probability of u is less than or equal to theta equals 0, which also equals yn. So we can actually replace this guy here with just yn, like so. So let me just bring this all here. Okay, so the probability that u is less than or equal to theta is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of yn times 2 to the minus n. But if we just look back up here to how we had theta defined, this is just theta. Okay, so when theta is in between 0 and 1, the probability of u being less than or equal to theta is just uh, theta. And that, of course, means that this is a uniform distribution. So this, so I guess also that means our problem solved. If theta is less than 0, probability of u being less than or equal to theta is 0. If u is at least 1, probability of u being less than or equal to theta is 1. And for theta in between 0 and 1, the probability of u being less than or equal to theta is just theta. Okay, but just like a little extra is that this implies that u is uniformly distributed on 0, 1. Okay, um, yeah, so if you've not seen this before, uh, what a uniform distribution is, don't worry too much, but it just basically means in this interval here, 0, 1, 
uh, U kind of takes a uniform uh, probability among zero and one. It doesn't favor any particular values of theta in between zero and one. And yeah, so that's kind of what this is. And if we were to draw the PDF of this guy, it would be zero up to this guy and then go up to one, then across, back down to one, this is one, and then carry on at zero. So this is the PDF of this guy here. So it can only take prob probability values in here. And if we were to look at the CDF, so if we integrate this guy here, we get something like this. So this guy here is one, this guy here is one. So we're just integrating that function there. Anyway, that's how you generate a uniform random variable just from flipping a fair coin. Because each of those Bernoulli random variables simply, simply sort of uh, corresponds to, or you can simulate by just flipping a fair coin. Um, I guess you have to flip it an infinite number of times. Uh, but I guess one of the interesting thing is you can, uh, need, I need this sort of an extension to use to kind of work out uh, at what value of n do you know, or what's the probability that I, uh, sorry, what at what value do you know that u is less than or equal to theta? So if you only flip the coin, say, a, a 10 times, or n times, let's say, uh, what's, uh, what's the probability that you already know that u is going to be less than or equal to theta? Okay, so I'll leave that as sort of an extension exercise for you. And if you want another extension exercise as well, we can change it so we're not flipping a fair coin. We're now flipping a coin which has a probability of being 1p and probability of being 0, 1 minus p. And see if you can also uh, generate a uniform random variable. Anyway, that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.